Hi and welcome to a TSO host tutorial on emails. Today we're going to set up email accounts on our cloud hosting platform. We're then going to configure it in a mail client. And I'm using a Mac, so we're going to configure it in the mail client and that comes by default with a Mac that's Mac Mail. The way we're going to configure it is pretty much identical to how you configure another mail client like Outlook or Thunderbird or even your phone. But we'll cover separate tutorials on those later. It's still going to be worth anyone using any mail client watching this video just to see how you set it up and the settings you need in order to configure it. So I'm here in the Pro Hosting control panel with TSO Host. It's the same control panel that we have for any of our cloud hosting, the light, the standard, and the ultimate package. They're all in this in this package here, in this in this platform. I've added this domain, tsotraining.co.uk, and I now want to create an email address for it. So we click email accounts once we're in the dashboard. Under email accounts, you can see I've got no existing email accounts added, but I want to create a mailbox. I've got a couple of other options here. One is to create an alias, that is, if I had a mailbox which was Seb at tsotraining.co.uk and I also wanted Sebastian at tsotraining.co.uk, an alias would just redirect one to the other, it would mean both of them work. A forwarder would forward the mail to another address. So for example, if I had a Gmail account or if I had a, an email address on another domain, um, then I could set it up to forward there instead. But now actually what I want to do is what most of our users want to do is actually create, a, create our own mailbox. So let's create seb at tsotraining.co.uk. Then I want to create a password. Create new mailbox. That has now created my mailbox on the system. The easiest way to access my mail wherever I am is through webmail. Now, there are two options for webmail. Either I can go to webmail.com mydomain.com, so in my case that's webmail.tsotraining.co.uk, or because that domain might not yet be registered, or it might be a new domain, I can go to webmail.gridhost.co.uk. That you can see if you go to the client figure configuration page, you'll see it listed right at the bottom. I think my face is probably obscuring it here, but if we click that, and I'll copy that link, you see that webmail.gridhost.co.uk? The reason for this is this is secure, and in a second when I go through the configuration in email client, I'll explain to you why security and having a secure link is much more important than having a non-secure link. And I'll explain to that to you when we go through the client configuration. For now, let's log in. So we go seb at tsotraining.co.uk and the password I set up, which I think is that. And here we are. I'm not going to save my password. You can see. I've been in, I've sent myself a test email, and it's come through here. You see these couple of tests here? If I wanted to send a new email, I'd click this one here, and then I'd create a new message. So from seb at TSO training to seb at TSO training at credit UK with test two, test two, and then I'd click send now. Message sent successfully, and it's there in the control panel. Hopefully any second now. And it's there, there we are. So. That's how webmail works. Actually, you're probably watching this video because you want to see how you can configure a mail client. And now we've got all of these settings and we've sent a couple of test messages, I can now show you. What we have here is Mac Mail, and I've clicked a Mail Preferences and I've got this account screen up here. This is a new version of the system, so on the older versions you get to a screen within Mail. Now it's just a more integral screen to the whole of the Mac, but really the settings are exactly the same. So I have all these different options for different types of accounts I want to create. Obviously it's not a Twitter account or a Facebook account. You just want to go right to the bottom and click add other account. Basically we're going to set up as many manual settings as we can because really when we set things up manually we know the settings are right. So let's do add other account. It is a mail account. Let's create. Right, full name. Whatever you want it to be. I'm just going to leave mine as said, but you could set it to whatever you want. You could. For example, if you email it from a company, you might even want it to be your company name. Email address. This is, of course, the full email address, seb at tsotraining.co.uk. The password is the password you have created, which I have now, if I can spell it right, filled in there. And then we hit create. What it tries to do is it tries to discover the settings. It won't work, so we have to manually configure it, but that's okay. So next. Now, there's two types of accounts we can set it up as. Two types of accounts, really, that all internet email is. It's either IMAP or POP. In the olden days, when email was invented, people only really had one computer. So you would connect to a server, which didn't have much space, so you didn't want it to store that many emails, and you would pop the box, 
and download the messages from the server, put them on your computer, and that will be it, because you're only ever connected from one place. Actually, the way email works now is you check from your mobile phone, you check webmail, you might have a laptop, you might have a computer at work, you might have a computer at home, you might have an iPad, all of these things, if they were to individually download the messages, either you'd start missing messages, or you'd start getting confused, because if you read one email on one system, you wouldn't have it on another, or if you sent a message from one system, you wouldn't see that sent message on another system. So what's happened really over quite a, quite a long time, the last 10 years or so, is people start using IMAP, which is the way that everything synchronizes. So that means if you read a message, it will show red on all your devices. If you flag a message, it will show flag on all your devices. If you delete a message, it will go to the trash in all your devices. What it does is it stores all of the mail on the server, so your mail actually gets stored on our server, and all your mail client does is it synchronizes and shows you what's going on on the server. So we definitely want to set this up as, mail, as, as an IMAP account. I can't really see any reason why you'd want to use a pop account. So let's do IMAP. The mail server. There's a few things we could use. We could use mail.yourdomain. So I could type mail.tsotraining.co.uk. Actually, I don't want to use that. And this is what I wanted to talk about security with you. Mail.tsotraining.co.uk does not have a security certificate. That means if I'm connecting to mail.tsotraining.co.uk, I'm going to have to connect unsecurely. That's fine if I'm in my office, but it's not good if I, for example, took my laptop to a Starbucks or to somewhere where there was a Wi-Fi connection which I shared with slightly more malicious people. Because what they could do is they could look at their traffic, which is unencrypted, and see all my emails or see my mail password. We have quite a lot of incidences where we see people's mail passwords being used maliciously because they've been sniffed over a free Wi-Fi connection. For that reason, I will almost insist that you use this, which is mail.gridhost.co.uk. What that is, is a white label host name. That is a host name. Gridhost is a nothing domain. It doesn't point anywhere, but it's got an SSL. It means that you can connect to that securely and everything is encrypted. So mail.gridhost.co.uk. That's for both the incoming and the outgoing mail server. Username. With us, your username is your full email address. Mail, Outlook, Thunderbird, all of these mail clients will try and make your username to be something without the domain name. With us, it's got to be the full thing because we have so many users called Seb. If your name was, for example, Adam or Dave, we probably have thousands of email addresses, tens of thousands even, with people with that name. So you couldn't just use the username Seb. So we have to use the full thing. So it's Seb at tsotraining.co.uk. Password is the one we've created. Next. That verifies it. Outgoing server, exactly the same. Mail.grutos.co.uk, username, password. Great. That is pretty much it. We now have Mac Mail configured with our emails. And here you can see the messages we sent earlier and received earlier all working there fine. You can look at the different folders and it's all synchronizing nicely. What I want to show you is some of the things that you might need to change and might need to check in your settings if you're getting any errors. Almost always configuration issues, if you have things set right, are caused by the ISP, that is your broadband provider, blocking a port or making a restriction that has temporarily stopped your email working. And if we set things in a certain way, then really they should never limit these restrictions. So we're going to go through all the settings one by one to make sure that if you've got these set, everything should work okay. Mail, preferences. Here you can see a list of accounts you've got set on the server. You see I've got a couple of the activated, but this is the one we set up earlier. This is the things it's pre-filled from that auto configuration we did. Let's go through three things step by step, just line by line. Enable this account. If I untick that, it takes it offline. I want it enabled, so we'll keep it ticked. Description. This can be whatever you like. Let's set this to TSO training. That's just how it displays in the side. That doesn't affect any deliverability. This account type is the thing we discussed earlier between IMAP and POP. That should be saying IMAP. If it says POP, no real worry, but if I were you, I would just set up a new account with this plus arrow with all the settings we did earlier and set it as an IMAP account and then just disable the POP account. Full name. Again, exactly what you want to be shown as. I'm going to just put it as my full name. Email address, that needs to be your actual email address. Now we get to the configuration. Incoming mail server, as we looked at earlier, mail.gridhost.co.uk. Username, full email address, always a full email address. 
if you've got it as anything else other than your full email address, it's not going to work. This is the most common thing is someone has the wrong username set up. Password is the password of your email account. Actually, that's probably the most common thing that someone's got the password wrong. If you get an error when you're connecting saying that your password is incorrect, there's only really one thing that could cause that issue and it's that your password is incorrect. If you log into your account on the TSO host control panel and the control.grid host control panel, click email accounts, click change password, change your password, enter the new password, that usually fixes it. Outgoing mail server. This is often an issue if you have a problem sending emails. Let's go through these settings. So you click, I'll just do that slower, you click this, you go edit SMTP server list. This is the account we want to set up. It doesn't give it a description by default, so let's just create one. Let's just call it TSO training for this one, but you can call it whatever you like. Again, it's just, that's just cosmetic. The server name, this needs to be mail.gridhost.co.uk. TLS certificate needs to be none. Advanced. Use default ports should work absolutely fine. However, if you have any issues at all, use custom port and then force it to use port 465. The reason for that is sometimes ISPs and broadband providers block port 25, they might block port 26, which are the ones that we probably try to use. So if you use, use default port 465, I've never heard of one blocking port 465. Use secure socket slayer, definitely tick that. The reason for that is what I explained earlier about when you sit in a cafe or on an open Wi-Fi network, you don't want anyone to be able to sniff your password. With SSL, everything is encrypted so that if anyone was to sniff, all they would see is a random string of hexadecimal characters. Authentication, password. Username, full email address, password. If you want to store it, that just means you don't need to enter it every time you send an email, you can store it there. I'm going to store it. Okay. So those settings should be fine. Mailbox behaviors, we can ignore all of this. This just decides whether you want to store those messages, store your sent messages on the server, and whether you want to delete them, delete trash after a certain time. The defaults are pretty good. We, we don't need to play around with those. Advanced settings. There's one thing you might want to change here if you have problems with it. This almost always works perfectly. If you're having issues, however, change the, where it says port 143, change that to 993. That's it. That is all the settings there are. There are only really this page the page under the outgoing SMTP settings and the advanced page that you can configure. And if you have things set up in the way that I've set all of this up, the way that my screens show here, you really shouldn't have any issues whatsoever and it should work perfectly. So let's just close that. Let's save the changes. And now we can send a test email. So let's send one to TSO training. Oops. Send TSO training. .co.uk. Let's call it test again to be original. And let's send. No didn't like my password, pressed entered it wrong. Okay. So that's now sent. And as you can see, if we test this, my mail should hopefully come through within a couple of seconds. And there we are. The way that we've configured this mail client with those settings under the mail preferences section is exactly the same if you are to configure an iPhone or your iPad or any other mail client. Those IMAP settings are identical. We'll put some guides together for all the other different types of mail clients you can use. But really, remember, hostname, mail.gridhost.co.uk. Username, your full email address. Password, your email account password. SSL is on. That's it. Thanks very much.